And good morning. <clears throat> Happy Monday morning. Welcome back, everybody. Give everybody some time to join in. We are back. It is Monday. Welcome, welcome back. Welcome back for this marvelous Monday. It's March 30th, 2020. We are on day 11. Day 11 of homeschooling, remote learning. Day 11. I hope everybody's doing well. Good morning. Drop a comment. Let me know you're here. I'd love to give you a shout out. Welcome back to this marvelous Monday. Good morning. Good morning. I hope everybody had an excellent weekend. They got some fresh air. Hi, Abby West. Good morning. I see you're here. Thank you for coming back. Oh, hi, Ryan. I wish you were my, you are in my class now. You are officially a Kinder Cavs. How awesome is that? We love having you. I know the boys and girls in my class would love you. I'm so happy you're here for this marvelous Monday. We're back at it. I hope everybody had a nice weekend. What did we do to keep our bodies healthy this weekend? Did we get outside? Maybe we exercised? I did this really fun um, dance class, um, virtual dance class using Zoom with Juliana. That's what we did. We did this fun dance class. It was hard too, <laughs> but it was a lot of fun. And we laughed and we enjoyed it. We set it up outside too. On a Friday night, we put it on the front porch and we watched and the woman taught us how to do all these dance moves and music playing and it was a lot of fun. What did you guys do to stay healthy this weekend? Hi Turners, hi Brian, hi Miss Walker. I'm so happy you're here. Happy Monday. So I figured we'd start like we usually do with our riddle. Did anybody solve our riddle? Why was the broom late? Anybody figure that one out? Hi, Ms. Ebenezio. Why was the broom late? This is kind of a silly one. Did you figure it out? Well, Ms. Ebenezio told me she went for a long walk this weekend. That's excellent. All right, I'm taking this one down. Why was the broom late? Are you ready? It overswept. How silly is that? Is it a bit overslept? It overswept. So it was late. So cute. I thought that was a, a really silly one and then you'd get a good laugh out of it. Do you want to know what our new riddle is that you can try to solve? Hi, Teresa and Killian. Hi, Gibbs. Oh, Trevor got, Trevor's so good at these riddles. He said he was sleeping. Swept away. I, I love it. Oh, you guys are so great at this. Hi, Yago. Good morning. Good morning, Logan. Happy marvelous Monday. I'm so glad you're all here. So we just answered our riddle about um, why was the broom late? He overswept. Here's our new riddle. What has many keys but cannot open any doors? What has many keys? but cannot open any doors. And I'll add that to our story so you can revisit it and try to figure it out. Hi, Brenda. Lots of friends. All right, I'm so happy you're here. So I do wanna do a little emotional check-in. And I know we're trying all different strategies at home to take care of our bodies and our minds and make sure our emotional well-being is doing okay. Um, I love all the ideas my friends share with me. And um, we, let's start with our breaths, all right? We're gonna do in our nose, out our nose for three big breaths just to try to um, regain calm. Are we ready? <clears throat> and then we'll do the lion's breath at the end. Let's go for it. Ready for the lion's breath? In our nose, out our mouth, here we go. relaxing. I love it. All right. So I wanted to share something that I like to do with you when I feel a little bit stressed or anxious. And usually 
every Sunday I get a little nervous or anxious, even when we're in school, because I think about all the things that I want to do. I get excited, but I have like all these things I want to do and I get a little nervous and anxious. So one of the things that I've always liked to do to help in those situations is do some sort of project. I like craft projects. And sometimes I have to do something that's not related to school because I spend a lot of time working on school things. And that's a healthy thing to do for your health and for your mind. So I had all these really cool fabric craft uh, scraps that Mrs. Newberry, a lot of you know Ms. Newberry from our school, we, um, someone donated all of these pieces of fabric and we were saving them for some projects and trying to figure out what to do with them. So I came up with an idea. I was like, I'm gonna get out my sewing machine. I'm not very good at using it, but I'm just gonna try. And I decided I wanted to try to make a bunny pillow. Do you wanna see what I came up with? It's not completely done, but I wanted to show you guys what I worked on because I was really proud of myself. Look, I made a bunny. How cute is my bunny? And it's a two-sided pillow. And I still am waiting for Amazon to send me my stuffing for my pillow. And here I look, I made another one. I made two. How cute are they? Those are my bunny pillows I made. So you never know what you can do until you try, right? So I tried. I'm really happy with how they came out. And once I get the stuffing in and they sew them shut, I will show you guys the finished product. So that's something that I like to do. It helps me de-stress and I felt really good afterwards and I felt like I accomplished something. Good morning, Mr. Kelly. Hi, mom. My mom's here. That's Susan Morgan is my mom. Everyone say hi to my mom. <laughs> I'm so happy she joined us. All right, so think about what you can do. Maybe you like to build with Legos or with blocks. Maybe you like to draw. I like to do projects. So I did my project to help me yesterday. And now I feel really focused and ready for a really great week of learning. Aren't you excited? All right. And I want to keep our learning like fun and stress-free, right? This is fun. We all get to come together. We get to say hi to each other. It's so important. Hi, Christian. All right. I have a new nursery rhyme for you. You might know this one. Probably a lot of you might know, but I want to make sure we all know it and we're going to memorize it. We're going to learn it this week. Are you ready? It's the itsy bitsy spider. Do you know this one? So I'm going to say it through once and then we're going to practice together like we've been doing with the other ones. So the itsy bitsy spider crawled up the water spout. Down came the rain and washed the spider out. Up came the sun and dried up all the rain. And the itsy bitsy spider went up the spout again. Do you know that one already? If you do, that's awesome. So I'm going to do a my turn, your turn, and we're going to practice. Are you ready? The itsy bitsy spider, itsy bitsy spider, crawled up the water spout. Crawled up the water spout. Down came the rain and wash the spider out. Out came the sun and dried up all the rain. And the itsy bitsy spider went up the spout again. Good job. Did you notice that as I was saying those words, I was kind of bouncing my hand to the rhythm? Because most nursery rhymes, they have like a rhythm to them, like music. And you might have heard this nursery rhyme in the version of a song where someone sings it, which is a great way to learn things. So you ready to, to try it together where we do a full line and then you repeat, ready? The itsy bitsy spider crawled up the water spout. Your turn. The itsy bitsy spider crawled up the water spout. Down came the rain and washed the spider out. Your turn. Down came the rain and washed the spider out. Ready? Out came the sun and dried up all the rain. Your turn. And the itsy bitsy spider went up the spout again. Your turn, the itsy bitsy spider went up the spout again. Awesome. You guys are awesome. Hi, Vargas family. So we are gonna practice that 
some more as this week continues, all right, and we'll play some other silly games with it. I love playing with nursery rhymes. They're so good for our reading brains. I do want to revisit um, on, I think it was Friday where our video got cut off. It was Thursday or Friday, and I had to restart it. So I had to skip an activity, and I don't like doing that. So we've been working on using our arm to identify beginning, middle, and ending sounds in words. So I'm going to start by saying two words, and then you're going to say the two words. And then we're going to figure out what the first sound is, and we're just going to say the sound, not the letter. Okay, so I'll do the first one. I'll show you, and then you guys can join in with me. Are you ready? So it would go like this. Van, vacuum. Your turn. Van, vacuum. First sound is vroom. All right, practice that one with me. We'll do it again. Van, vacuum, van, vacuum. First sound, good job, awesome. All right, you ready for the next one? Water, winter, water, winter. Good job. Next one, chicken, cheese, chicken, cheese. First sound, good job. And one more first sound, here we go. Yak, yam, yak, yam. First sound, yeah, yeah, excellent job. Kiss your brains. All right, you wanna try some harder ones? <clears throat> oh, Brian, I love all your little emojis for the itsy bitsy spider. <laughs> That's awesome. All right, so let's do our ending sounds now. This is a little trickier. Pay really close attention. We're gonna do the last sound of the word. So Miss Kavanaugh goes from her shoulder down to her wrist, all right, as we say the word. <clears throat> Here we go. <clears throat> Fun bin, your turn. Fun bin. What do you hear at the end? Mm, good job. Let's try another one. Sock book. Sock, book. What's that last sound? Yeah, good job. Play, toy. Play, toy. Yeah, did you say yeah? Good job. All right. Mop, tip. Mop, tip. What do you hear at the end? Did you say p? Awesome, awesome. All right, one more. Hit, mat, hit, mat. That's the ending sound. Did you say t? Yeah, t. Excellent job. Great job identifying beginning, matching beginning, and matching ending sounds and words. You're doing so great. So I want to focus on um, some CVC words today. And those in my class, you know, we, CVC words are consonant, vowel, consonant words. And today our middle vowels are only two letters. Let me show you. The two letters that are going to be in the middle of all of our consonant vowel consonant words are the letter E as in egg. Eh, eh. Can you say that with me? Eh, eh. And I as in insect. Eh, eh. So we have eh, eh and eh, eh. And the reason that I have all of our CVC words today having those two sounds in the middle is because sometimes they, we get confused between the two. So today we're really going to focus on making sure we're saying the correct middle sound when we blend our words. Are you ready? I made some new word cards last night. Here we go. This is my favorite part. Is this your favorite part? I love this game. I want to hear you, right? I should be able to hear you. But remember, we don't yell our sounds. We say them in a quieter voice, but just loud enough so the people around us can hear, okay? Fin. Show me your fin. Oh, it's a dorsal fin. Eh, t, jet, jet. Good job. Fly like a jet. Ooh. Next one. R, eh, d, r, ed. Good 
Did you say red, like the color? Yes, awesome. Six. Six. Yes, number six, draw it in the sky. Woo, good job. Eh. Did you say sip? Take a sip of your coffee. Z. Eh. Z. Zip. Good job. Zip up your jacket. D. D. Hid. I hid in the closet when we played hide and seek. Eh. T. Wet. When you get out of the bath, you are wet. Hen. Hen. Have you seen a hen on a farm? And this is our last one. I want to hear you. Bed. Bed. You sleep in your bed. Great job blending those words that had the middle sound of e, e, and i, i. Awesome, awesome job. Oh, shout out to Christian's Mimi who's watching with us too. Hi. Hi, Miss Kaplan. A couple other friends joined in. Awesome. You guys are doing so great. I'm so proud of you that you're interacting and answering. So I want to move on to some math. I have a fun game for you today too in math. I think you're going to like really easy peasy to play at home. And that's the whole purpose of doing things that are easy for us to find the materials in our home and practice so we can flex our math muscles, right? So I wanna work on our skills first. So we've been working on counting on and subitizing. So I wanna start just with a couple counting on. So counting on is when we start counting from a no number other than one, <clears throat> okay? So we're gonna have a starting number and we're gonna have an ending number. So here are mine, starting number is three, ending number is nine. That means we stop there, start and stop. Are you ready? Let's do it together, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Awesome. Starting number is, yep, seven. Say it with me. And ending number is, what number is this? Twelve. Let's do it from seven. Here we go. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. You did it. All right. Now, what number are we starting on this time? Yes, 11. And what number are we ending on? That's a 19. Here we go. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. You are great. One more. Ooh, what number is this? 20. And what number is this? 30. This is a harder one. Are we ready? 20, 21, 22, 23. 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. You got it. Mwah. Kiss those brains. Double kiss those brains. You guys are so smart. We've been working on tallies, and last week we did a really fun activity with pretzel rods or sticks, creating tallies and counting them. So I want to remind you um, that subitizing, remember, subitizing is looking at something and boom, knowing what it says, what number of objects it is, okay? And there's different ways of subitizing. We've been using dots and tens frames and tallies. You can do pictures. So today I want to use tallies. So I'm going to show you a tally picture and you're going to try to figure out what it is as quick as you can. And then I'm going to pull it away and you're going to tell me what it said. All right. How many? It was four. How many was that? Three. 
How many was that one? Yeah, it was five. So whenever you see the four lines with the line through it, well, I did it backwards, the line through it, you know, right away that's five. And that's why we've been practicing counting by fives. Awesome job. What was that one? 10, five, 10. So smart. Here we go. Did you say six? Super smart. What'd you get? Nine. Good job. What'd you get? Eight. Did you think five and count on six, seven, eight? That's okay. It's a good strategy to practice to get quicker. One more. What was that one? Seven. Yeah, five, six, seven. Awesome. I'm so proud of you with your tallies. Great, great job. So are you guys ready to see the math game I wanted us to do today? I collected a bunch of things from around my house. So I want to talk about things that are long and things that are short, right? Long and short. And last week we measured things around our house. Um, <clears throat> we measured objects with things that weren't rulers, like some of us measured with erasers and twizzlers and um, uh, pretzels, all different types of things. We can, a pencil, we measured, and we counted up how many of each, and we talked about what was the longest and what was the shortest. Do it with me. Longest, shortest. Do it again. Longest, shortest. Okay, excellent. We can do it this way, too. Longest, shortest. Longest, shortest. So I collected all different random things from around my house, you can collect different things. Um, I figured they should be um, small enough, though, to fit inside of like a shoebox. But if you have more space, you can pick bigger items. Hi, Miss Long. Thank you for joining us. So I'm going to scooch this over a little bit and scooch us down a little bit so we can see my workspace here. All right. So we're going to call this object lineup. So you ready to see all my crazy objects that I collected around my house? Okay. I have hand sanitizer. I have a hair clip, I have a screwdriver, I have a pretzel rod, do you know what this is? It's one chopstick, a chopstick. I have a sharpie marker, a q-tip, a chopstick, and a hair A bunch of random stuff from around my house. Now I want to try to put these in order from longest, okay, to shortest. So I'm going to put them from longest to shortest, longest to shortest. So let me move them off of my workspace and try to figure out, hmm, I think this is my longest object. What do you think? My chopstick? Let me put my chopstick here. I'm pretty sure I'm going to line it up along this the bottom line here and see. So chopstick. And I think next would be my screwdriver. I'm going to line that up, make sure the edges meet. Hmm. My Sharpie. Let me compare these two. I want to see which one is longer. Can you tell which one is longer? Is the screwdriver longer or is the marker longer? Did you say screwdriver? I agree. The screwdriver is definitely longer. All right. So then the marker. Hmm. My next ones are very similar. They're going to be tricky. Let me see. Help me compare these two. I have a Brett. And a Q-tip. Can you tell which one's longer? 
Yeah, I think the Q-tip's a little bit longer. So I think that one's next. And then the barrette. Hmm, the next ones are really, really similar too. Look at this. The, I think these are equal. I think I picked two things that are equal. They look almost exactly the same. So I'm gonna put them side by side. And then the pretzel is a little bit shorter. And then the hair clip is the shortest. Does everyone see that? Look at that. So I have longest to shortest. I organized all of my objects. Longest to shortest. And notice I lined them all up along the edge of something. You could use a piece of paper. I just happened to use my dry erase board. So I lined them all up from longest to shortest. You could do the same thing and do it from shortest to longest. You can find all different objects and do this, but just make sure that when you're done, you put them all back where you found them. Because I know how kids like to do things. And sometimes I like to do it that way too. I make a mess and then I forget to put it all back and then I have an even bigger mess. So when you're all done using all the objects, you have to put them back where you found them. So we're gonna do longest and shortest at home today. When you're done organizing your objects, either take a pic and have your mommy send it to me, your mommy or daddy, and, or you can draw it and you can send me a picture of that. I can't wait to see how you played longest and shortest. Pretty simple, right? Easy to do at home and lots of fun. Lots and lots of fun. I had fun collecting silly things from around the house to play longest and shortest with you. So let's remember we're working on being helpers at home too, right? So being a helper at home would be putting back our things after we're done using them. And I love continuing to hear what you guys are doing at home to be helpers. It's always important to be a helper. I had um, a really special friend of mine that was so thoughtful. Um, so those of you who know, know I don't love to cook. It's okay, but it's not like my favorite thing to do. <laughs> I'd much rather be making a project. So um, I have a really good friend named Faith who loves to cook and she's always making all these like really fancy elaborate meals and things and she left a package on my doorstep because we can't go see each other right now and she left a package with treats that she made and shared with our family on my doorstep how nice is that what a nice helper that was so kind of her i'm so thankful for that um so I just want to encourage you to be a helper, to be kind, to spread that kindness around today and every day, right? It always, it makes you feel better too. You make someone else feel better and it makes your heart feel better. Sometimes when I'm feeling a little bummed, I try to, or sad, I try to do something kind or helpful for someone else. And it usually makes me feel a little bit better too. So for my class, I want to give a couple of reminders and tell you I updated our website, our Google website. It's really easy to use and everything's all in one spot now. So I sent you on Dojo to our Google um, Classroom, or not our Google Classroom, I'm sorry, our, our Google website, Ms. Kavanaugh's website. I sent everyone the link and everything is there. And I even added some resources, like there's food pantry resources. Um, there's the guidance offices resources if you need um, help with internet or anything else. Um, but I also want to remind my friends, I want my class to read one RAS book every single day, one RAS book and answer the questions. Um, I want, and also if you want, you can record yourself reading and send it to me. I would love to hear you. All right. Keep reading those books. Get big shout out to my teacher friend, Miss Long, who was on the phone with her kids listening to them read to her. That's so awesome. Good job, Miss Long. I'm really proud of you. You rock. So thank you for joining us this morning. We will be back at 1030. I have a really special story for you at 1030 today. And we have a new word problem, new problem of the day. So I can't wait to meet back up and share my story. And uh, I'll see you then. Thank you for joining us on this Marvelous Monday, March 30th. I'll see everyone in a little bit. Bye.